name is John O'Boyle. Uh, <clears throat> I joined the Merchant Marine in uh, 1942 in April uh, after leaving home. Uh, age 20 at the time. Uh, the Merchant Marine is a uh, volunteer civilian operation so that you go to a hiring hall and if there's a, a ship that needs uh, persons on it to work, uh, then you sign on. And uh, I signed on to a, a, a tanker with a friend of mine at the same time. Uh, and the tanker was uh, the Franklin K. Lane. Uh, and we took, uh, we went from uh, New Orleans, uh, where I signed on, to uh, Miami. And uh, from Miami, uh, we went across to uh, Aruba. Uh, the off side of that island is all is a refinery, which most people don't know, I guess. Uh, and from Aruba, we went to uh, Venezuela. I think the name of the little town was Carapito. We picked up uh, a load there and, and went to Rio de Janeiro. And uh, from Rio de Janeiro, we came back. I'm a little hazy if I don't remember right. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I think we went back to Venezuela and either got some more fuel or I forget exactly. At any rate, about three days out of Trinidad, the boat was uh, torpedoed. And uh, I and the crew, the survivors at any rate, uh, uh, spent the balance of the time until July on uh, the island of Curacao, on the island, off about 40 uh, Kilometers how, off the. How did you how did you get off the boat when it was torpedoed? We uh, <clears throat> lowered our lifeboat and uh, and tried to uh, row, but the uh, the fuel the the cargo we had was uh, 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 oil oil uh, crude oil, and so it, it was difficult to row. Also, there was a fire in the uh, in the crude oil. And uh, <clears throat> and our rowing was pretty inexact. The fight, the uh, motor wouldn't start. Fortunately, otherwise it would have set the crew on fire. But the uh, the wind shifted, and uh, we got out of the area of the crude oil and uh, picked up by a Dutch corvette, which took us to this island of Curacao, where we were on the beach uh, comfortably. Uh -huh. for the balance until July of uh, 42. And at that time you went into the army or what? No, first I went uh, back uh, to my hometown. St stayed, uh, uh, I forget, a certain amount of time in New York uh, and then went back to St. Paul Park, Minnesota. Hmm. And uh, there I worked for briefly in a packing plant, then a defense plant, and in November of uh, 42 uh, volunteered uh, for the army, the paratroopers actually, hmm. and uh, I was sent to Blanding, or Blandon I guess, uh, Camp Blandon, where they didn't take me because of glasses, uh, and uh, so I was sent to uh, North Carolina for basic training with the uh, 28th Division in Durham, outside of Durham, uh, Cal uh, or Raleigh, excuse me, Raleigh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, North Carolina. Uh, the camp was Camp uh, Butler, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. uh, and from after basic training, we were sent to Florida to the uh, 28th Division. Uh, and there we had amphibious training and regular infantry training. Uh, and from there, we were sent to uh, Camp Pickett, uh, Virginia. And from Camp Pickett, uh, we went. Uh, we had some mountain training outside of outside of Camp Pickett, uh, and then uh, I forget the time sequence. But eventually, we were shipped uh, uh, in uh, troop ships to uh, England, to uh, Wales. Uh, uh, where did you get on the troop ships? New York or Virginia? Do you remember camp, where? Uh, camp Miles Standish, I think, was the name of the camp. Uh, uh, the, the uh, harbor. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we went to uh, 
Wales. We were we were my division was in uh, uh, the British Isles uh, for about uh, two hours, or, well, about a year, maybe a year and a half, something like that. Uh, um, any further questions? Well, yeah. Now, did you you ended up in where in where in Europe? How'd you get? What oh, camp uh, you in? well, then my then uh, that was a build up uh, before the invasion, you know. Yes. And uh, my division, the twenty eighth, uh, was quite a highly trained division, uh, but we were not on the initial uh, invasion. We were we, st we were stationed at that time in uh, Southampton mm -hmm. as the uh, reserve division. If things fell apart on the initial invasion, uh, right. then uh, but uh, fortunately, the uh, for us at any rate, the uh, <coughs> the invasion was successful and the the casualty rates was low, and we were committed after that to uh, into combat in the in the hedgerows in Normandy. So, so you ended up in the hedgerow country. Yes, right. Yeah. How did you uh, How did you get through it? Uh, you mean hedgerows. Uh, a big part. How'd you get through the hedgerow? Well, we were infantry, so we walk. <laughs> you walk, okay. <clears throat> and then, how much time did you spend in that part of the country? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. I'm, I'm sure that uh, <clears throat> our first day in combat uh, was uh, outside of a, a town called Saint Lo. Oh yes. Uh, before Saint Lo, uh, yeah. and. Uh, we had pretty heavy casualty rates there. I think in my in my squad, as a matter of fact, uh, twelve men to a squad. Uh, mm -hmm. There were three of us survived, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, the division w angled towards Paris. We we mine was the division that marched through Paris. I have a picture of it. Uh, okay, uh, and in fact, I can point to my myself in the okay. In we'll the do picture. that. No. We'll do that later. Then so, from uh, Paris, we angled uh, northeast toward uh, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, that area, and uh, we <coughs> we actually went touched all of those places into Germany. And the 28th Division was the first division to set foot in Germany, actually, uh, hmm. at the Siegfried Line, uh, mm -hmm. at the Siegfried on September 15th, uh, uh, 1944. I I was shot, wounded, uh, shot in the legs uh, by a sniper or by a infantry. machine gun. Machine gun. Yeah, I'd like to mention that at the same day that I was shot, there was a uh, Indian from Cass Lake named uh, Alvin Jackson uh, was shot on the same day in the stomach with a heavy duty machine gun, and uh, we were both sent to uh, a hospital in England. Uh, and we visited there a little bit. Uh, he was in my outfit, uh, so you always try to keep contact. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but uh, that was the end of my combat days at any rate. I was in uh, the hospital for, I forget the period of time, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I was uh, reassigned to uh, a 155 outfit. Uh, uh, but on the first night, I stepped outside to get my barracks bag on, off of a step, and uh, somehow came down on my right leg, and um, my heel bone split. And uh, since that was a bone injury, I was sent back to England for the hospital again. And then, uh, when that then, going back through the replacement depots, uh, I was reassigned to. Uh, the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Forces, Shafe they called it, yes, uh, yes. Uh, in Frankfurt, uh, and that's where I spent the rest of the uh, uh, my I time see. until uh, being what, what did they have you doing at Shafe? In Shafe? Yeah, what did you have to do? I was uh, put on. I was on limited duty, okay. and uh, uh, they assigned me to uh, uh, detach service with the Red Cross Club, and in the Red okay. Cross Club. Uh, uh, our big feature was making donuts uh, mm -hmm. on the troops uh, or the okay. the personnel in uh, Frankfurt would come to our club and have coffee and donuts. Uh, so that's the way I spent the balance the last five months of my uh, service time. In time? Service, uh, well, when you got out, was the war over or still going oh, on? It was out. It was over. Okay. Yeah. So it was over 
when you were staying in Germany then? Yes, yes. I think actually I was in one of those replacement depots. Uh, uh, <clears throat> How long were you in Germany when the war was over? Oh, I'd say probably uh, five months at least. Okay. Uh, were you considered then part of the occupation forces? I guess so. Uh, yeah. I think they, they tried to uh, get the people that had been in combat uh, out. They didn't want them in occupation forces yeah. because they thought they might yep. blow up or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get them home. Yes, get them home, sure. Get them home. So then your your time was up and you went home. How did you, they put you on a boat to get you home? or We, uh, we were on one of those, what they called a liberty ship at that time. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, we made port and, uh, and then uh, we were sent by train to uh, uh, to my hometown, our home, to St. Paul, the Twin Cities. And I was discharged there at Fort Snelling. Huh. Now that's the reason you got the Purple Heart because of your leg wound. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, did you ever? Did how about the fellow from Cass Lake? Did he ever get back home? Yes, he did. Uh, uh, I think he. Uh, we didn't see each other actually. I just, you know, we were okay. in the same outfit though, so we sort of kept track of each other. I did see him again, I should say, oh. uh, when he was dying in uh, uh, Cass Lake, uh, uh, he sent for me. I went to see him. Uh, he was, I think he had cancer and they were sending him down to Fort Snelling. Uh, hmm. So that's the last time I saw him. A very, he was not my buddy, but uh, we were in the same right. outfit, yeah, sure. same company actually. So, yeah, well that, that should, that's important to remember, uh, something like that. John, thank you very much. We'll take a look at a few pictures now. Okay. I've got a few remarks. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. I, uh, I've been eternally grateful to the uh, my time in the service uh, because I think there are varying degrees of service. Uh, for some people, uh, it's just uh, putting on a uniform and uh, doing the same work they were doing back home. But they were all in a out. Everybody was in a outfit and there's a sort of a bonding happens and because you you meet all kinds of people different types mm -hmm. different races different uh, uh, parts of the country almost different accents uh, and you learn to get along with people which is a valuable mm -hmm. uh, lesson I think uh, and also <coughs> uh, the time in the in my active time in the service in, in the combat is also I think a period of uh, or an expression of uh, testing. You're tested, uh, do you, are you going to crack up or are you mm -hmm. going to uh, run or are you going to, mm -hmm. what are you going to do and uh, it is well to know that uh, you're dependable and could do your duty and, uh, mm -hmm. and would uh, and, and be a, a good soldier, so, so to speak. Uh, come on, <clears throat> did you, did, when you were over there, did you come across any of the concentration camps? No. Okay. No, that, uh, that was the, no, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, Frankfurt was not that far to the east, I guess. Uh, okay. And uh, didn't have much inclination to go there. Yeah. Anyway, I'd seen enough dead bodies yeah, and, yeah. and horror, so... Yeah, so. why do that? It's a pretty unique picture. How did you happen to be in it? Well, it was... Uh, somebody gave it to me, and uh, I think he got it from a magazine, probably Life magazine. It, uh, I, the, I just had the glass replaced, so it was broken, and, uh, but they couldn't see the back of the picture to see where it was from. But somebody told me it was in... Uh, Life magazine and the issue that had Dewey on the cover. How'd you know that you were? How'd you know you were in there in the picture? Oh, I remember the picture being taken. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 there was a kind of a weapons carrier ahead of us, and there was one guy going with the cameras. The cameras up there. Uh, how did you come across the picture yourself? 
to get a copy of, of it. How'd you come across the photograph? Well, this one, uh, a guy gave it to me, uh, uh, and then... Uh, uh, did, did he know you were in the picture? Oh, this one? Oh, yeah, sure. He yeah. knew it, okay. I, I saw it, I've seen it a couple of times since. Uh. That's extraordinary to have a mass picture like that oh, in France, and then you're in, in, the, in the picture. Yeah. That's quite an honor. <laughs> Well, my division was diverted to go march through Paris. Uh, I think that's August 29th, I believe, uh, uh, of 40, 40, 45, I guess. Uh, uh, this picture was taken in, in Frankfurt. It's uh, the other person there is uh, Gordy Larson, who was my buddy during uh, the in the hedgerows. Uh, he had been assigned from the. Uh, division MPs up to a line company uh, to bring them up to combat strength and then just before we went into Paris he was reassigned back to his division uh, but we uh, arranged to meet in uh, in Frankfurt uh, he, he subsequently became quite an entrepreneur banker and so on uh, very successful uh, in a, his uh, home and family was in Lake in the Hills Illinois uh, <clears throat> right outside of Algonquin, uh, Illinois, not too far from Chicago. I recognize the Purple Heart, John. Okay. What, what is the one just right here with the two stars on it? These here? Yeah. There are three. They're, uh, those are campaigns. Okay. And I see what looks like a bullet here. What is that bullet for? The bullet was uh, when I was shot in, on the Siegfried line. That was embedded in my heel. Uh, this ribbon here That's a goes good with this. Model. Good conduct, okay. And the purple heart you got for the bullet in your leg. For being wounded. Okay. That's the uh, bronze star. And uh, that sometime after, quite a bit after, they were awarded for to people that had the uh, the Purple Heart and or the uh, Combat Infantry Badge. <clears throat> Here you go, John. Oh, okay. generation were accused or identified as a great generation. I, I think uh, uh, whoever sold that book uh, missed the point of the generation. Uh, the, the, uh, the, that generation was a generation that uh, believed in uh, public service. Those that were <coughs> uh, drafted, uh, it was a universal draft, uh, they didn't eagerly jumped to go to go into the service, but uh, they went willingly enough, and they did their duty. Their, uh, and they came home and became good citizens. Uh, and I think that was commendable of that uh, generation. I think what is not what is not identified with that generation is uh, one of the uh, great accomplishments was the Marshall Plan uh, for rebuilding Europe after World War II and uh, the creation of the United Nations, uh, an institution which uh, uh, has never <coughs> been truly tested or <coughs> given the authority that it should have for world government. Uh, uh, <coughs> and I think uh, additionally in, uh, <coughs> in the uh, uh, United States, uh, the veterans uh, of World War II, uh, for the amount of time they had in the service, uh, or had what they call the GI Bill, and it, almost an entire generation uh, uh, went on to higher education because of that uh, GI Bill, which uh, contrasts now, I think, with the, uh, the, with the almost exclusivity that is developing and uh, to attend uh, higher education. Uh,